Why does it seem right now like the world is at war? This is not your grandfather's war. The dark energy is fighting because they don't like the light that is on this planet. Darkness has always been heavier. We're at the fulcrum where we're fighting coming up to a place where that's going to stop. The weapons of a warrior of light, wisdom, truth, kindness. You now have the ability to change the energy from sadness and horror into compassionate action. Hi everyone, welcome back. I'm Michael Sandler, your host on Inspire Nation. If you ever want to know what's going on with the world and with the war in the world, then do we have the Cry On Show for you. Today I'll be talking with Monica Mariani, Lee Carroll, and the higher power known as Cryon, who's come through Lee since 1989 and even spoken before the UN seven times. Today I want to know what's going on with the world, why the world appears to be at war, and what this means for humanity and our own ascension. So welcome back to the show, Monica Lee and Cryon. Are you ready to shine? Woo! <laughs> <laughs> you can tell we've been here before. I think you just overblasted the mic, and I love you guys for it. <laughs> I love you, I love you, I love you. So this is going to make it very hard to switch gears. This is kind of a heavy bring it into the light show today. I got to go there. Um, it just, forgive me for doing this, but... Why does it seem right now like the world is at war? I think because it is. And it's predicted and it's right on schedule. It's on time. And when we see it, it hurts so much. We are in a battle and it's more than just a war that we've traditionally seen in the past. This time it really is a battle of consciousness. And it is the light and the dark fighting each other. And the more that we are collectively raising our consciousness, yeah. those who have not been able to penetrate past the bubble of low consciousness have not been able to join with those who have broken through that bubble and realized that inside of every human is yeah. a preciousness of life that they are deeply connected to. And when you haven't broken through that bubble and realized it, you are still operating in survival and you are operating in a low consciousness. So the war that we see happening on the planet, it's different to what happened in the past, even though it kind of looks the same, but it is truly a battle between low consciousness and high consciousness. And I want to now turn it to Lee because just recently we actually talked about this with our community to help guide people. What do you even do in these situations? But before we get to the what do you do in these yeah. situations, I'd like Lee to expand more on the battle of light and dark as it was predicted. If you don't mind, I'll start from the beginning. And I would apologize for those who've heard this before, but you can't hear it too much that what we are seeing right now is a culmination of many things. It's all predicted and it's on time. The horror of it is as unexpected. It could have been different. We have free choice to have done whatever we did. But the confrontation that we're seeing in the way it is unfolded and the parties that are there is, is has been predicted. Now, it's not me. I didn't predict it uh, with my channeling. We can go right back to the indigenous. And that's where we it, that's where I want to start, because this is this is hundreds of years old. This whole idea centers around something called the precession of the equinoxes. And this yeah. is where you get your magic 2012 number. If most people wanted to, what was all that about? It's the math of astrology. The Earth has a wobble, 26,000 year wobble, and it's related to these prophecies from the indigenous. You can look at the ones from the Maya, the very, very profound they had because they built calendars around it and every 5,000 years they predicted this so much so that they actually dished their calendar in other words they they took it away and it was the end of the calendar the Mayan calendar people we were told that and movies were there and everything else but it wasn't they have a whole new calendar and if you just ask if they have calendars out to the year 4,000 but this one this new yeah. one 
was very, very specific. And their prophecy was that if we didn't kill ourselves in about 2000, which was the other prophecy we got from the Bible, that we would then see eventually through the precession of the equinoxes, the highest level of consciousness humanity had ever had. Now, that's their prophecy. I don't want to take you off track, so I'm going to let you keep going, and I can bookmark that well. Okay. Hopi. The Hopi Indian Prophecy Rock. I've been there. I've channeled in front of it. I've talked to them. This is one of the favorite uh, subjects of Greg Braden, who has analyzed it and all. It is scribed in stone (laughs) what's happening and the choices that we would make and when we would make them. This awakening, and this is what Krein calls it, to a higher consciousness, is more than just that there's light. Let me pause you for one sec. The Hopi stone, if I'm correct? The Hopi prophecy rock. Hopi prophecy rock is the stone that has two lines on it, is it not? One line of humanity making it, another line where we drop off, because I want to set the stage for everybody here yep. today. Yep. And th- I, We're going to light and love, guys, but this, yep. hold on, yep. but goes off the cliff. And we have passed the point where we go off the cliff, just so you know. Now, I was there. I've listened to them talk, and we agreed. And I pointed at that rock the last time I was there, the last time we channeled, and I said to the Hopi guy, where are we? And he, he's pointed there. It's more than the junction anymore of falling off the rock. The junction is beyond that. We have turned the corner according to what Krein has said. And everything around us shows that, even though... Everything is, uh, and turn, turn on the news anywhere, and all you see is war. If you, if you go that route and think that's all there is, we're doomed anyway, because you're concentrating on something that is not going to help the planet. We have to look at something else that has, that has gone on. We Please. are awakening, Cryan says, to things that we are starting to see we never saw before. The a metaphor is this. We have a very old, ancient, dark, house, room, if you want to say it, suddenly we get lights that come in, let's say for television. (laughs) And what it shows is ugliness. Nothing has been cleaned. It's filthy. And it always has been. There's things crawling around in the corner and they are objecting to the light and they can't exist in the light. So they're going to do everything they can to get rid of the light that's been turned on. And that's the metaphor that we have. It's always been there, the stuff that we're seeing. But since we have a light that is illuminating it, suddenly we have the choice. And we're looking at it and saying, no, I don't want this. And that's a first. Um, take a look at what happened. And I may, have seen the, I may have said this to you before, and forgive me if I have, because I do podcasts, and I, I say the same thing every time. And, th- and that is this. When we started this war, when the war started with, between Russia and Ukraine, and basically, I'm sorry, uh, don't write me letters. It's a, it's a one-man war. So this is, this is what has happened. You, what you got is you did not get what was expected. You didn't have countries take sides and yeah. develop into a bigger war where you could, you could start the political control because there was a lot of people involved. It just didn't happen. When, when Switzerland decides not to be neutral, you know you're not in your grandfather's history. This is not your grandfather's world. This is a whole new deal. But most of the world looked at it and said, no, don't do this. This is not right. And so and you're seeing what happened to the rest. They still didn't join. This East-West thing has been with us, what, 50 years of my life or more, 80? And that is not the way it played out. So it tells you something else is going on. Now, when you have what has happened now, you can get the same kind of thing. The last time it happened, you had Jordan, you had Egypt, you had all of that. No, they don't, they don't want any part of it. In fact, they, their biggest thing is what they're going to do with the refugees. So it is not playing out the same way it did, the way history says it always had, and what was expected by the players. This has surprised and shocked those who were involved. The, I'll call them the dark energy that is fighting because they don't like the light that is on this planet at all. Please keep going. Then I've got a few questions. Then I want to hear from Cryon specifically. Oh, you will. Let me jump in with this specifically. Yeah. I don't read much more than the headlines of the news because I have such a, a vast audience. I want to know the bare minimum of what people say 
is going on. And I actually have a leading expert on AI coming on in a couple of days, and we're talking about misinformation and things of that sort. Good thing. <laughs> so what just took place, and, and, and you're probably unaware of it, and it's not necessary to be unaware of it, but just before this interview, either the Israeli forces bombed the hospital in northern Gaza and killed hundreds and hundreds of people, or a bomb went off from, uh, from the, uh, uh, on the Gaza side, and that killed hundreds and hundreds of people. What you're saying is, rather than this drawing in all of the other key players and saying, I'm aghast, we're going to attack Israel, I'm aghast, this is going to happen, that's going to happen, instead, cooler minds are going to prevail that say, wait, there is a different way. It's more than cooler minds. It's a whole different consciousness or attitude of the countries around it. They don't want any part of it. They're done with it. They made their peace and it's stuck. That's a whole other story about how that happened. I've been to, to Egypt numbers of times. I've been to Jordan. They're not interested anymore in carrying the, what, what Kreiner says, he even, he even said it in the recent thing we did the, in the channel. He said, mothers, and he's talking about all mothers everywhere, what are you teaching your children? Are you teaching them the history and how to hate your neighbors? Or are you telling them that there's history and now we can re resolve the history or it doesn't have to be the same? And in certain areas, they're teaching hatred and they continue. And this is both sides. They're, they're, this is, don't write me letters, folks. We're looking at it. I've been to Israel many times. We've talked to, to them and they agree is that some, what has to change is the, the, the seeds of, of history. It, it, so we don't propel it. So we don't then say it's always this way because you're supposed to hate this person. And because here's what happened, here's what they did. And so it carries from generation to generation to generation. Pretty soon there'll be a generation that goes, tell me again, I forget. You know, this is, it's, it's, it's like this. Meanwhile, that's what perpetuates it. And now this is what we see. What Krein has said, and over and over is that this particular thing that you're seeing right now has been expected. And what you're looking at that's so horrible is the consciousness that would go and do these horrible things that we're seeing. That particular yeah. consciousness, Quine says, is a, a dark energy of the past because this is what they did in the past. This is what they did in history thousands of years ago. And it's just perpetuated right up to here and the world is saying, no more. This is not acceptable. This is, at, at any level, this is not acceptable. And so it's got to pass. Kryon even said, this may be the final battle here before the world says no more and we don't see war. What about that one? So instead of it getting worse and perpetuating and bringing in countries and, 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 and making a third world war, you may see the opposite and that is Stop it. <laughs> so in, in the past, the players would, would go and, and, well, bomb, be bombed, whatever they would do to get other countries involved, to get other countries on their side. And this time, there is more light than darkness, shall we say. And I, I really want to understand this balance more um, or help others to understand this balance more. There is an evolution of consciousness where we say, not only are we not going to play that game, but you need to stop that and you need to stop that now and we will not support that anymore. That's what we're seeing. And this is, you know, it's easier said than done because it continues because the players continue. But the world is, is, not, ready f is not ready to participate any longer mm -hmm. in these kinds of things. And so I'm expecting some unexpected things even from this to happen that the world may be, uh, we're saying, okay, you can no longer do this, you can no longer that. I'm, this is what we've done in our societies. We have, we have looked at our authorities and said, no, don't do that anymore. You can, this is not acceptable. In, in, in a police procedure, no, don't do that anymore. This is not acceptable. And they'll say, well, we've done it for 200 years. We've done it for more than that. You say, well, not anymore. So we're looking at so many things. The next one probably is government. <laughs> <laughs> that actually begets the question. When we look, you know, if, if we take an America-centric view, and this is the worldwide view, but if we, if we take an a, a America-centric view, we would say, actually, the repealing a lot of the laws that were taking care of people in the past is that a last gasp 
effort by the old guard of a lower level of consciousness? And then how do we have the consciousness, uh, the, 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 the hope, there, that's the key word, the hope when it appears on the surface that things are actually going backwards, the hope that we're actually ascending or moving forward or ahead? Answer to your first question, yes. That is backwards, <laughs> very backwards. What do you know about your Congress? They hate each other. That's, what, that's all I know about the two sides, that no matter who wins, they're going to wipe out what the other guys did, even though they were good plans. How does that make you feel about your tax dollar? What we're missing and what we can do? Younger leadership. And, and Karin has made it clear, younger leadership. I am in my 80th year, and I'm telling everybody, get somebody who's in their 40s to be president of the United States. Let's, let's go for that. Take a look at the, or 50s even. <laughs> because when you have a senior, when you have somebody my age, <clears throat> you, we can't help it. We have been through the, the, the old energy and it's in there somewhere, it sticks in there. You can't help it, bring it out and do things. This is just psychology 101. You get a younger leadership that hasn't been through it, that sees better ways, that's invested in a, a much different plan. If you keep, <clears throat> look, we take a look at the leaders of, of the players in question without me even giving names. Look at what they've been through and look at what they've experienced and what they're doing is, is just what they did in the past. And that's what I'm talking about. So we need the younger leadership. And that will start to make, in our country, a Congress that starts looking at each other and saying, okay, we're going we're gonna to make an agreement not to like each other, but maybe to honor what's either. There's good stuff on both sides. Why do we keep, you know, <laughs> arguing so much that nobody can see goodness in anything? And they throw away each other's programs just to be because they're who they are. Thank you. So let's go to Monica. Monica, you had a lot to say here. Well, I was, <laughs> I was just wanting to add another layer into the conversation because we're kind of talking globally and generally. And Lee and I, we do a weekly program. It's called Healing Wednesday, and we actually have it translated into other languages. So our first awareness of even what was happening in the Middle East came from our Hebrew translator that wow. revealed shocking things that when I read it, I mean, you know, when you get that news and all the chemistry in your body changes because you can't even believe what you're reading. And so it becomes personal when you have someone that is saying these people have been kidnapped. The daughter of my friend from school has been, you know, there are so many terrible, evil things happening and coming to us, reaching out and asking for prayers. And so we have been in communication and we immediately jumped online and wanted to do a meditation to send peace into the situation. And then since that, you know, one of the things I was asked was, hey, Monica, do you, I know you're the brains of Cryon and you tend to remember all of the Cryon channels, which in general, okay, I do. But she was asking specifically to help those in her country that were going through this about the channel Cryon gave. And it happened when there was a mass shooting in a high school in Florida. It was just dreadful, dreadful, dreadful. And Cryon gave a channel on that and really talked about how those who went through that experience, those seeds are going to be with them of trauma forever. And what can we do? And this is where Cryon is saying to kind of disable that part of empathy within you that stops you from sending compassionate action. And as an old soul, and a light worker, it is about visualizing those people, those parents that were inflicted and wounded that day to visualize them at some point in recovery and joy and peace and happiness. And so I did send this off for this to be translated to apply it to the same situation. And earlier you mentioned the hospital. I mean, a hospital being bombed, uh, innocent people who are just caught in the crosshairs of just low consciousness, raging and, and inflicting pain and hurt and suffering to 
those around and immediately think this is just doesn't even make sense to us. What can we even do? And again, it is trying to disable that part of you that shuts down being able to see the God within, within everyone. It's disabling that part of you that becomes empathic with that. Yes, connect with them and and realize that there is a fallout here. There is a cost. There is trauma and suffering that for some will never, ever, ever go away. And I feel that's what we are being called to do. And if you are tuning into this, you are part of answering that call of what can I do to help and support my brothers and sisters in this time of crisis. And it is by being empowered within the divinity that is in you and it can make a difference. And if you can tap in to that part of you that is always present 24-7 and wanting you to connect with it in this moment just so that you can send out peace to those who cannot feel it at this time, that is what you are being called to do, to come forward and do that. It will make a difference. And in a few years from now, I don't know how long it is, but we're going to sit back and go, wow, we got through this. We got through this. And those who were from low consciousness, they tried, but they didn't stand a chance. Thank you, Monica. How important is it as old souls here on earth? Is it to, to dust ourselves off, dust off this meat suit, remember who we are, and then send prayers and love and positive energy to whomever we consider is on the, quote, other side. You know, I, even this other side... And there are no sides on an earth. That's why I put it in quotes. Yes, that's a really interesting question because God only sees the magnificence of our soul. That's all we're ever seen. And it's hard, even for me, telling you this, when someone has done an evil act, it's hard for you to be able to see the God within. And yet it is there, it exists. And this is where we really get into, we have free choice to find the divinity within or not. It is through free choice. It doesn't mean that the other person is going to make that choice and see the God within. And then you think, well, why not? Why didn't they find the God within? What were they taught? What did they grow up believing? And I want to let our viewers know before we even started this program, we got to meet the most precious being on the planet. How old is your daughter? She is 17 months and uh, 11 days. Not that I'm counting. (laughs) 17 months and 11 days. And Lee and I, we both sat here looking at your beautiful baby girl on your knee before we began the program. And she emanated joy and happiness. And so I like to think every newborn coming onto the planet has that same radiance, fresh, so fresh from the energy of the creator that we come and go, come and go, come and go. And they're they're carrying that so fresh. And then we grow up and then we kind of are trained into what we think and believe. This is why, you know, when Lee was saying younger leadership and then in a few generations, we are just going to look back because those coming in, At a certain point, I feel no matter what they are being trained, their kind of compass is going to go, say what? You want us to kill someone? This is, this kind of doesn't resonate with me. Super souls, new gen. So Don Miguel Ruiz in in Four Agreements has talked about and and his sons have talked about uh, that we must domesticate, in quotes, domesticate our kids, train our kids, or somebody else will. But in this case, what you're saying is the new gen is Teflon. They're not going to take the domestication that we give them that says, uh, kill this person, be angry with these people. These people are bad. These people um, you need to hurt or hate or all this. They're going to say, wait a second, what are you doing? Michael, are you familiar with the Indigo Children? Oh, absolutely. Okay. You know that I coined the phrase? No, this I did not know. So I was in the uh, the ADHD world, and I was a, a featured keynote speaker for a long time. 
And we talked about how a lot of ADHD kids, and I, I don't like even labels, but, but um, kids coming in with special gifts were many times the indigo children, the new generation, who had a different way of sensing a feeling of seeing the world. That's exactly right. This is my book called The Indigo Children. It's a Hay House book. Um, I forget what Then year. I've read your book. Yeah. <laughs> I had no idea. But, yeah, that's right. Most people don't. Um, it came from a lady named Nancy Tappy, and we reported that, who got to see auras, and she got to see more than auras. She, was, she had um, a, a brain disorder. Synesthesia. Synesthesia. She, mm. she was a synesthesiac, if you want to say that. And what she saw was colors around people, and she related it to different kinds of personalities, and she did courses and books and stuff. And she was starting to see a new color come in, and it was indigo, and that's where it got its name. It's not an aura. And so we reported that, we did a book on it and all, and it was the best selling book for Hay House that year. So this started it and I, I labeled it so the, the world could see the indigo children. But that's it, and you mentioned it. It's a, it, the, it's a different consciousness of kid. And that is what we're seeing. Now they're grown, they're, they're being the teachers of other indigos now, and it is evolutionary as well. The kids are not doing what we did. And they're objecting to certain kinds of teaching that we had. And this is the whole book was around that. So yes, this figures into everything we're seeing. And it happened long enough ago so that when we reached this point in time that we expected they would be adults. And they would be of voting age and they would do things and they would be light workers and all the things that we'd hoped. When I read your book, I considered myself one of the earliest adopters, meaning indigo children. Uh -huh. You can see the colors I'm wearing here. Uh, yeah. and you can go do an aura scan. I had one done in Sedona a while ago, and there's the colors glowing off of me. If I was to put on that hat for a moment, I'm going to go back to my high school, um, high school history class where they're talking about World War II. These people attacked that people, so those people had to. And I've got my hand up, and I'm going, I don't get it. AP history, and they're going, what do you get? Don't you get? I go, I don't get war. And they go, well, there's a time and a place where you have to defend and you have to kill to protect. <laughs> I don't get it. I don't get it. And I, you cannot get me to get it because a bullet in you is a bullet in me. There is no, and, and I guess that's the new gen. They get this. And they're putting, what you're saying is, we have made a choice because the biggest question today is, are we going to drive humanity off the cliff? And you're saying no, because the new gen is coming in, is already through the doors and is going to say, we're not going to take this anymore. No matter how much you muck up and try to blow up this place, we ain't going to take it. There's a, a great story. Well, we did it in the book or we, we talked to people who, who experienced it. And this is one of my favorite ones. You know, when, when, you're, um, when you're a child and you have arguing parents, it's very threatening. Uh, normally you cover your ears or go hide under the bed while they fight. And now we have stories back then of kids standing between them trying to negotiate. <laughs> <laughs> if you saw Hannah Bear in our lives, if mommy and daddy aren't happy, yeah. she is going to pull us together yeah. and do everything. And, and you don't want to put that burden on her, but they came in wired yeah. to yeah. do something yeah. special. This is different. This is new consciousness. And it's only one layer of new consciousness because many even of, um, of those who are older, like myself, are awakening out of like an, a coma. This is what Crying calls the recovery year. The, we're awakening out of an old conscious coma and waking up and going, whoa, this world is way different <clears throat> than my dad or my grandfather. And, and, and it's, we thought that if you're born at a certain time, you can't change. It's not trouble. It's, I mean, it's not trouble. It's not, it's not true. We, we can change this. And we have. We see it all the time with those who are way over 40 and are set in their ways. And suddenly they're having an awakening. And this is what Cryan said would happen. And this is where I want to say congratulations to everyone that is <clears throat> watching this, no matter what age you are, because your own awakening mm -hmm. has provided the couch for these beautiful newborns to come into this energy that we have created collectively so don't i you know i know when sometimes we say we talk we get excited about the new generation and there's some people that are going oh do i have to wait then 
for the new generation to come and grow up, for all this to go away? No, no, you don't. The reason those new generation are coming through as like Michael said with Teflon and no matter what we're going <laughs> to throw at them, they're going to resist it is because we have collectively been awakened to a bigger truth than what we grew up. And there's going to be more and more that go this war and this war. Well, I don't get it. What was the outcome? What's the end game? And in 2014, I helped Lee with a book that he wrote and published. It was called The New Human. And one of the channels that Cryon gave within that book was talking about consciousness and how it will evolve. And he gave this classic scenario where I kind of feel like there's a metaphor happening and playing out with humanity right now. And it was revolving around children. And, you know, you've seen kids in the sand pit and one child grabs the toy of another child and there's a battle that happens because the other child wants its toy back and it's not happy and then, you know, mum comes or another parent comes and the end result is that both of them get punished both of them go without their dessert or whatever it is, and it's as though there's no wisdom there. So Cryon in this book of The New Human suddenly starts to describe a child that hasn't had that maturity and wisdom where it's grown up yet, has it already built in within the DNA, and it has this same situation happened where the toy is taken. I guess it doesn't matter who's taken what, but this one child almost plays out the reaction. If I react this way, we're going to both lose and get nothing. And so instead the child doesn't react and moves on to something else. This is what Cryon says yeah. is coming for humanity. Thank you. One last question here on the on this topic, and then I'd, I'd love uh, it if we can speak with Cryon or hear from Cryon about this. The term critical mass comes to mind. If we're looking at the new gen coming in wired differently, and, and we're still, we, um, Elders are still accidentally giving them a lot of their wounds, <laughs> but but they're, they're a lot more Teflon. However, if enough of them come in or have come in, then the older gens, just like Lee is talking about, start to pop because of the critical mass of a new energy, a new vibration in the field, I'll describe it, a higher frequency, if we will. Is that what's going on? Yes. And that's why you're on the air right now talking to us. I mean, it's like when Be you have someone part of it. grumpy yeah. and someone comes <laughs> along that's really happy, they get irritated yeah. by the happy person because yeah. they want to stay grumpy. I was in uh, I was in Russia some years ago, and I can remember uh, we went into uh, Monica and I went into a cafe, and we had we had a gal serve. She she had to be fifteen, sixteen years old, and she was serving coffee, and she came over and she said, um, "Can I practice my English with you?" And I said, mm -hmm. "Yes, please." And we were doing that, and she said, "I have a question for you that I've always wanted to ask an American." Now they get, they, at that time, they were allowed to get our internet. They're not anymore, but they can now. I mean, they did then. And she asked, she said, is it true that Americans smile all the time? That was not an expected question wow. as though she doesn't. And she told us that they don't because they were told that if you smile, you're, you are hiding something. And so we understand that entire culture had that. And she wanted to, and I said, you see the internet. We said, we don't, we laugh a lot. You know, not all the time, but yes. And it's the natural thing for us to smile on camera. And you could see us here at the table talking. We smile a lot. And she said, I like that. I like that. It shows you a, a number of things about what we have to get through with cultures as well and what we're told. So. If we're trained out of joy, you know, this, uh, people are popping with that and saying, no, I was trained a certain way. I know better now. And the old way was you just stayed as you were trained and taught your kids that. That's changing. 
so uh, a last, last question before we speak to Crying. Do we then get to, if we see uh, aircraft carriers going over to support this or prevent that or cause this, do we get to do, as well as doing the work on the inside, are there steps that we get to take, we can say out of love, not against anything, but for something, for peace, are there steps we get to take on the outside as well? Most people don't understand the power we have. And it's going to sound trite. Absolutely trite. Well, we're energy, so it ain't trite. I already let, know let me Let me echo what uh, Michael just said. Not only are we energy, but science has shown that energy is, all, is consciousness, and consciousness is energy. It moves things, it changes things, it changes magnetics, it does. So suddenly it's a player on the field of physics. Consciousness is energy. What could we do with consciousness together? And we have said for years, if enough people concentrate on the same thing, it's gonna change stuff around us. So what Kryan has said, and it was just a couple weeks ago, um, in a, and we put it on YouTube and it addressed this, was this, is that if, even, if, if we could have a billion people silent in prayer or whatever you call it, whether they're Muslims or Jews or Christians or whatever, or Hindus or Buddhists, for four minutes on the planet together, just sending, sending visualizing peace where people need it and not making making any decision who needs it and who doesn't or who deserves it and who doesn't it's just everyone on the planet who is in trouble in any way at all even mentally or whatever if you see them out of trouble and in peace if if you could if you had a billion people there's only that's that's not the whole planet even it would change everything greatly and then Kryan said and somebody is out there who can do that and so just four minutes and he said that would just, that would be an amazing, it would make a million people for some million, uh, a billion of us, first of all, cognizant of the power we expect. And even that is not being told to people. People throw that away. We've been told prayer changes things. You can send energy, you can send love or whatever, but they throw it away. They say, well, yeah, but that's just me helping. What if a billion people did it together? Would that change your mind? And there have been so many who have shown it works. Lynn McTaggart shows it works. That's what, that's what she does. That's why she's on the planet, to say, look, it worked. Look, it worked. Look, it worked. And it does. What if we could get that many people, people involved and focused on that? Um, and this is, this, is, this is not that new, but we haven't really seen that. It's possible today because of the Internet. It's possible today with leadership who would agree and say, it's not going to hurt anything to pray for four minutes. It's not going to be unconstitutional. It's a, you know, pray as you want to. You know, if, even if you don't have a God, you can send energy. So that's, that's one thing. It's interesting. That, so the bombs, the bombs or whatever took place, I'm not trying to, because uh, who knows what the real story is yet. But we do know uh, lots of lives lost hospital earlier today. I think you're good. I think you're going to find that it's a little different than you were told. Oh, I'm sure. I'm absolutely sure. And I know that I can't tell what's the truth. But what I did hear afterwards was actually wild. That authority in the Gaza Strip said, we're going to go into three days of prayer now. That's different. <laughs> That's this new energy. Instead of an immediate attack, it was an immediate, let's go to a higher frequency, a higher vibration, and see if we can play a different game. Even in the midst, I know there are atrocities on both sides. Again, there are no sides. And yes, we'll get letters too, but I love everyone. I don't see anything other than, you can't convince me, because when we get on the other side, we're going to find out that we we're all playing roles in this game. Yes. Yeah. It's a serious game here, but we were playing roles. Yes. Do you really think the people involved wanted this? Do you, do you think they do? No, no. So you've got to ask the question, uh, is it then a question of how it was, how they got their goals met and they, did they, is their leadership um, different than they'd hoped? All of these questions, I think we need to, to um, well, they're going to come out. We had, had to ask. Young leadership probably wouldn't have done that. Yeah. So then let's, let's go. Let's ask these questions. Let's go to Kryon for a little bit if we can. Yeah, I'd love to. And I want to just premise to everyone that Lee has been channeling Cryon since 1989. I discovered Cryon in 2005. And back then there was a phrase used 
a lot. I, I don't think it's really been used as much now, but it was warriors of the light. And now it's more like we're called light workers. But certainly a lot of the channeled information in the earlier parts, often there was reference to a warrior of light. I think what we're seeing now, this battle between light and dark, I really get that phrase now because the weapons of a warrior of light is wisdom, knowledge, truth, compassion, benevolence, kindness, peace. These are the weapons, if you will, of a warrior of light. And this is where if we, the more we can actively engage these tools and gifts that we have, the more it goes into the field. The field is this intelligent, multidimensional, benevolent force that connects all of us. Each of us has a soul that is part of this field and the more that we communicate with our soul energy and engage those tools and gifts from spirit the more it is received and picked up by everyone on the planet we are broadcasting this so michael is asked to have cryon come through and the best way to do that is to just to spend time, remove all thoughts from your mind, even this conversation right now. We ask that you remove all tension from your body, allow yourself to relax. I invite you to close your eyes so that you can tune in to the energy that's within you, free of distraction from whatever's happening outside of you, just for these next few moments, just to tune in inside, connecting with that divine spark that is within you. Stay in this place. Stay in this place while we hear from Cryon. Keep those eyes closed, free of outside distractions and now let us invite the magnificent words of love and benevolence from Cryon. Greetings dear ones, I'm Cryon of Magnetic Service. There are so many right now who are so confused. There is so much fear on this planet. And it's not just the ones that are going through the horror that is there. <clears throat> I will tell you something that I have said many times. What you have before you right now, right now, is something that we told you was coming over 30 years ago. We told you that there would be an awakening planet and that you had a choice. That choice was even revealed in your scriptures when they talked about a time in the area of the years 2000 where you may even have an Armageddon, a time of choice by humans where the masters would return or not. I gave messages in the first book in the early 90s for you that said there would be no Armageddon. That there were things in progress that were obvious right then, back then, that said that this planet would generate a consciousness that would move through that potential and start another potential. And that other potential was also seen by the indigenous of this planet as well. You might say that what is in the field has been reported 
by many. And you should see and feel comforted in some way that this is not a surprise. What you see is not a move backwards from anything you were told was happening. It's actually on schedule. Human beings, you have choice of how good to make it, bad to make it, what you're going to do. But the awakening from a darker age would create what it creates. There are so many on this planet that are being surprised by what has taken place. And that is the methodology of those in the dark who want to keep everything the way it is. War is actually good for some. It perpetuates things that, that those in the dark say need perpetuating. And this was always the case in your history. War after war after war. You get done with one, everybody goes to lunch, and you do another. And that's the way it looks to any, any history student. If you want to know what marks civilization and war, it's the humans who do it. If you want to see one age and why it's different from another, it's simply how they do war. So war has been the staple of humanity. And you might say, well, it continues. No, it doesn't, dear ones. Take a look at who was involved and who was not, and who said yes and who said no. And you'll find a world that does not want this, does not want to take sides with any war on the planet. It wants to turn its resources to help others, to create more food, drinkable water, better schools. This is what humanity wants. If you took a poll right now, right now, you'd get that from almost everyone. Nobody wants to plan to have their families killed. It's absurd. And yet you are told by some that that's indeed what they want, for some cause that they want. No, it isn't. I'll tell you, this is where you start to connect to your soul. And what is in your soul that has never been revealed is the love of God. And if you start asking the various religions about God, they will tell you that at the core there is love. It doesn't matter what religion, at the core, there is love. There is this agreement, and the disagreements they have is with people, not about God. And that is starting to change in the similarities of people. They're starting to understand that love, not necessarily the way you worship or the doctrines that are there, but love is the key and the source of the soul. And that is what is starting to increase on the planet in so many different ways. How you treat each other, what you expect from your authorities, from your government, from those around you, is different from what it was 200 years ago, 100 years ago. You are starting to awaken from a darkness, a low consciousness, into an expected form of new consciousness that features caring, kindness, compassion. You're going to start seeing more and more of this. But for now, those are asking, what do we do? What can we do about what is there? The first thing we then plead with you, do not be disabled by your empathy. There are so many who are empaths who feel what the others are feeling, and they're no good to anyone. You must get through this with the wisdom of love and see what you can do. And that is to send them that which you have. So many are in good places, in peaceful places that are not threatened at all. Most of the world not threatened at all, can take that position, that countenance, that consciousness, and send it to those who are in trouble. We have called for, for, for that which would be four minutes on this planet, where billions of people would simply stop and send that, no matter what the religion. 
We'll see. If you have the ability these days to do something like that without polarizing it, without making it part of a political scheme or a religious one, do you have that ability yet? And if you do, it shows that the earth is starting to grow up and understand that you have the power to temper these things and then to stop them, not to postpone things till the next one. That is the biggest change. So let me say that again. You're invested in stopping things, but not in terminating the causes. And so they pop up again and again. So you've never really solved anything. This is the age of solution. To stop things in a way that the people that surround them will say never again. What can we change? We've told you also to temper what you tell your children about those around you or about what they, what they might expect from others and start showing them that this is a past earth not a future earth and they will grow up differently and they'll make new kinds of decisions that you never could because of your training or your programming by those around you or the religions or by your parents. It is in your hands what you do next. But I'll tell you this, if you are hopeless, all you do is send sadness to the field. You have to move through this. Empath, are you listening? <clears throat> move through this in the way that you transmute the sadness, the empathy, to compassionate action. No matter how ugly it gets and you're a sensitive, you now have the ability to reframe, transmute, change the energy from sadness and horror into compassionate action. Human being, start sending the love of your soul and the souls of everyone on this planet to a place where they get together and realize that one soul is all souls. And that is the new field. That's the new human. That's the tool that is here now, that never was before. That's why history will not repeat itself. It can't when the light is turned on and you can start seeing the dirt that comprised all of history and that created what you see in the history books. Let historians see this time as the end times, the end of the old times, the final battles, before a new earth, start to think differently and care about each other. No, there's not going to be a utopia. There'll never be a time when all the countries like each other, dear ones. But there can come a time when you stop killing each other. And that is the idea. That is the next step. Don't be surprised that with it comes new invention. And that's the way it always has been. The inventions you need right now will be given to you when you stop fighting. Other things will happen as well when you stop fighting. Historians will mark this time as the end of the barbarous years when the barbarians were in charge. Hmm. You'll see. Love each other. Love each other. I'm crying in love with humanity. And so it is. And I slowly invite you to bring your awareness back into your body after that beautiful message. I encourage you to keep those energies with you, that pure love coming from the other side of the veil. If you've had your eyes closed, I invite you to open your eyes. And thank you, Lee. That was such a beautiful <laughs> message of a bright future ahead. Thank yeah. Michael for the show that would allow that to be broadcast yes. to his people. Yes.
Thank you. So I'm going to continue for a little bit more if you're if you have the energy right here. So um, I'd like to understand more light and dark and whether they will always balance each other or whether this is something where the light is spiraling upwards leaving the dark behind, which is why the dark is throwing up their <laughs> pontoons and their weapons and everything and saying, come back down here. For instance, if I look around the world now, it appears on the surface, authoritarianism is massively on the rise. It appears on the surface that those who can will now use that word terrorism to take more freedoms away from people. And we can see this coming. So, and can help us to understand the light and the dark in what's going on here and how we can rise above whatever the old guard or the old gasp is throwing our way. I think there's two things to look at. First, you asked a question about balance. I have yes. never thought that balance is the answer. For instance, Thanks. if you take a look at, at history, we have always had more dark than light. It's always been out of balance. To balance it to me is not good enough. I want light Thank to win. You. I want light to win. <laughs> <laughs> and this is where crime says we are headed. But we're at that fulcrum. We're we're at the you know with the scales of justice. We are at that where the where right now the, um, the the darkness has always been heavier. We're at the fulcrum where we're fighting coming up to a place where that's going to stop. The other thing you ask, and it may sound trite, you've heard the, the it's almost a joke, what if they gave a war and nobody came? This is what you're Love starting it. to see. You're starting to see that. Other people are not on board. It's only a few that want to continue it, to build, the, to do the kinds of things they do to make it happen so that people are suffering. That's not worldwide. People are not jumping on like they have in every other world war or every even if it isn't a world war you see you know you see if there's eight countries and there's four countries and they're polarized and they want this and want that and then when they're done they all divvy up the rewards and take their land that is so old and that's what we're starting to see that it is old and people are looking at it and going where did you come from that you think you can do this and get away with it getting away with it means that you think that everybody's going to join in and you're going to have a bigger, a bigger deal. It's isolated as awful as it is. The countries all around what's going on are not going to want to join in. It seems to me from what you're saying, we need a new media outlet, news channel, channel, something where we are not looking at it from, if you, if you read, and, and, and we can talk about manipulation and the, those things, but even if the news, which I used to call negative worthless stimulation, wasn't trying to control us, it's all experts, in quotes, of the old guard, telling us this is the way it was, so this is the way it's going to be again. It's more than that. I don't want to say that all the news is conspiratorial. I think they're just commercial. I think they've got sponsors. Long ago, they understood that if, if, if they score their news with music and make the worst things first, they'll get more, more listeners. If it bleeds, it leads. And this is the way it's continued. So I, I just want to say that there will come a breaking point where there will be a news outlet or two will start competing and they're going to give good news and they're going to give it a little more balance. They'll tell what's happening, but they won't do it in a way that's politically motivated or using negative words. And they'll be careful the way they say it. I'm everybody, anybody from, from my group, if you're there, I want Walter Cronkite to come back. Oh my <laughs> he God, was, that'd be he fun. Was, you know, you tuned in, you got news. You, you didn't you didn't get a spin on anything. That's what we grew up with that's changed now to entertainment. So I hope this returns. Young people are going to do that, Michael. They're going to and the, the shock we've had numbers of shock. Who th who thought um, Google would work? They didn't make any money at first, you know, yeah, and, and, now, and who thought it was even possible to do what they do? Everything is free. <laughs> you say, well, where, how's that going to work? Took them a while to find out. 
That is a revolutionary new idea using media and people watching. There are more of them. And I think one of them is going to be the way news is given in a much better way. I think, you know, culturally, we are more apt to give our energy and focus to complaining and what is going wrong with things than seeking out moments of gratitude and what is going right with things. I am guilty of this as well. I have to say I'm, I'm, I'm getting better every day. Monica, I hit the oh no first, and then I realized that's an old wiring. Love you, mom. That's <laughs> her old wiring, which I've taken ownership of. And then I will try, not try, I will find the counterbalance and then go to what my wife taught me years ago of what's a win. What's a daily win? When I go to bed, what are some wins that we had today? Absolutely. And when I was sharing with you about the communications having with our beautiful Hebrew translator going through such terrible times right now, one of the aspects we do on our Healing Wednesday program is we do something called Miracle Moments. And this is where we get to share some of the miracles that have happened within our community. It is so important to celebrate even the smallest win that you have had where you can say, I woke up feeling happy. That is, isn't that a beautiful miracle? Even the smallest things, the more we start celebrating and focusing on those, that is where our attention and shift needs to focus to. And in the beautiful emails, I had a combination where these, these terrible things happening, but Monica, there's also miracle moments happening around me that can fill up so many of your miracle moments on the Healing Wednesday program. Now, that is not what the news is reporting right now. All we are getting at the moment is the atrocities that are happening, the things that wound our heart, and they just hurt us so much. But So I want to let anyone listening to this know that even amongst all of that suffering and trauma that's happening, there are miracle moments unfolding as we speak. I know this. I've had someone write to me and share that there have been miracle moments take place. And on the topic of dark and light, if I can chime in on that subject, mm -hmm. Crian has said the definition of dark is the absence of light. That's it. So if you want to dispel the darkness, Cryon says all you have to do is turn on the light. That's it. And so the only weapon really that darkness has in manipulating and controlling us is fear. When we see things and it's terrible, you can have a choice where you can let fear take hold of you and you can voice how awful something is and how horrible something is. Or you can take that choice where you recognize, yes, there could be some fear and horror in this moment, but you know what? I'm going to send light and I'm going to face off with fear and let's see who comes out the other side between love and fear. You cannot have fear when you have pure love. It's impossible for it to exist. It will dissolve. And so Crian has said as well, again, I think in the New Human book or Recalibration of Humanity, that the light-dark quotient on this planet Lee mentioned it before, it's been in favor of the dark, but it is at that tipping point where when you have more light, again, dark is just the absence of light. So it is a given that the more we can turn up the light, you're not even going to have to worry about the darkness being present. So that is the good news. And I want everyone to, if there's one thing to take away from this is that Turn up the light 
The darkness cannot exist within the light. Thank you, Monica. I want to stay with you for a moment because uh, Cryon mentioned earlier about empaths and the challenge that empaths and your audience, my audience, I'm going to say every old soul is an empath. You feel energy more. There's just no way around it. This is a good thing. This is a great thing. And how do you, because you don't have to watch the news today. You, you could check the weather or you could just have a smartwatch on and something is going to chase you down and tell you what just happened. And I'm sorry that I mentioned anything to you earlier, but, but it will chase you down. That's how this works. So as an empath, how do you not take on what I'm going to call that sticky energy or residue of fear and worry and anxiety, which is natural. We have kindness. We have compassion. We have such tremendous compassion. How do we not take that on and find a way at that moment when we hear something to, oh my gosh, still bring it to a place of love and bring it to a place of light? Well, I'll, I'll share what I feel from myself and then Lee can chime in if he feels he needs to. First of all, I think everyone has unique aspects of their empathic abilities. And so there's no one blanket solution that is going to apply to everyone. So this is where we really spend time in self-discovery, self-realization. What are things that you need to do for yourself that's going to work? There's going to be many people, you could do a search on the internet and find out over, you know, oversensitivity is actually meant to be a superpower. So how do you tap into that power of superpowerness? And how do you, let's say, shield yourself from being overwhelmed by empathically feeling all the things that are traumatic or fearful, all those things? How do you shield yourself for that? So everyone's going to have a different way that works best for them is their own beautiful, unique soul expression. What's your way? It's our partnership with Gaia, Mother Earth. Gaia is the ultimate partner we have. And to me personally, Gaia is the ultimate way of transmuting energy that we wish to release. So my advice is if you are feeling overwhelmed, take off your shoes, stand barefoot in the earth. Get, if you can get your toes into the soil or get your toes into the grass or if you can hug a tree or you can somehow have the ability to be in touch with our earth, you can discharge any unwanted inappropriate energies, Mother Earth, Gaia will happily receive those energies from you and she is built for this. She is the ultimate repairer, self-repair, remediation, self-restore. She is able to transmute that energy. And so go into Gaia, find that place, get your toes into the ground, hug a tree, discharge, give the command, Gaia. I ask you to pull all the negative energy, inappropriate energies from me in this moment. Release into Gaia. And when you feel that you've released all the things, maybe you even want to do it in a bath if that works for you as well because water, as you know, has all these negative ions in it and is also part of Gaia. So you if you want to take a bath, release everything that you do not want to hold. It doesn't belong to you. You are magnificent. What, what are you doing taking on all of these mucky, murky energies that doesn't belong to you? So release all of that into Gaia, into the water bath, wherever you are. And when you get to that place where you feel you've tapped out all of that negative, inappropriate ickiness, and then just allow yourself to connect and stand and absorb that benevolence, that love, that unconditional support of your magnificence to flow to you. Then it's your time to receive. And trust me, if you can get to that place where you're in that neutrality, 
and then you open yourself up to receive, there is going to be an avalanche of abundance of love pouring into every cell of your body. Do you give permission to receive it? Ah, now we get into, <laughs> I feel a few. This is the hardest thing for light workers because for years we have slogged through this energy and it's given us a low sense of self-worth. So when you have a low sense of self-worth, it is so hard to receive because we want to give, 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 give. How much time are you spending giving? At what point are you able to just sit and be loved? That is the challenge, is it not? Sit and be loved. There's nothing to do. When a baby comes in, does it have to perform tricks for us to love it? We fall in love just from its very presence. Think of yourself as a newborn soul coming onto the planet. Do you have to do anything to be loved? Absolutely not. Your presence, just by being on the planet, especially in these turbulent times, demands that you be loved beyond measure for what you are doing. And you said yes to come to this planet. That's how amazing you are. So if you're an empath, you are amazing times 3,000 triple billion times. <laughs> so that, that's from me. And well, how about you, Lee? It will be shorter. <laughs> <laughs> this is what Crying has said is we are in a new time. There are actually new, would you call it, energy tools, metaphysical tools. If you are a super sensitive, if you're an empath, you know how hard it is to recover from this. And Crying has said, Try things you've never tried before. Monica pegged one of them, and she also said there's many ways that, uh, that people can do this, and we all are very, very different. Try things you haven't tried before. My favorite is to ask for it. Dear Spirit, take me out of this sorrow and transmute it to the energy that is more commensurate with my magnificence and what I can do for the planet. Take this energy of empathy and transmute and convert it to light. That's what I've done. That's what many have done. And it works because this is a new tool. Call it, a, call it something you didn't expect. That you are, it's your lineage. Even as a super sensitive, you should be able then to change the things you're, you're sensitive of. That has always been the goal. I think most people who are sensitive, can I either block or change or transmute the things that are bothering me? Yes. Yes. And yes. Especially these days where you're so much more useful let it than disabling you, let it transmute it and create light out of it. Woohoo! <laughs> A few more questions. Before I do that, where can people go to find out more, to find your work, to find retreats, to find all that you have to offer? It's easy. It's cryonmasters.com. And what you're going to find there is, yes, we do a lot of courses and things, but we have this weekly broadcast called Healing Wednesdays. It is a subscription service that's stupidly cheap. <laughs> but beyond that, I've never heard it put that way before. It is, well, it is. I think it's. I think we're at eleven dollars a program or something. But um, we, we we give away um, a quarter of what we do, and so that's every first Wednesday of the month. It's free. It's on YouTube. It's on our site. And so we, if if you're not ready for any to pay to buy anything. Go see it for free. So once a month we do that. And if you love it, then you can consider the rest. And there's so much there um, for that price and also for and we did for everyone. We did that three years ago. It was Cryon's. He he set up the way it was done, even the price. And he said the price is to is to allow you to get a studio and do it. <laughs> and that's going to then give you the court to it all worked out and it's it's beautiful it's it's, it's and he said make sure you give away 25 percent of it so we do <laughs> love it is there one thing that cryon has said recently about the times that we're in or about well we're going to call this the end times or the end of times because there's something new coming being birthed here but is there something that cryon has said to each of you individually i want to ask that has surprised or shocked you well, you'd be shocked that we don't get individual messages. <laughs> we have to kind of listen in yeah. on the channels that Cryon is giving to the collective humanity. I mean, it's funny. We'll say, well, what does Cryon say about this? And we just get 
You are dearly loved. <laughs> <laughs> what it's am like, I supposed to do? What? Well, you're dearly loved. <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> yeah. But for me, there is just this comfort and presence. And I loved that you said we are in a meat suit. I think those were your words. Yes, those this, are. <laughs> this is a meat suit and there is this other side of the veil that's kind of hidden from us and we have to discover it and find it ourselves and we give intent for that. And when you give intent, when you give permission, if you ask a question, hmm, I don't know about these people, I don't know about Monica and Lee and Michael, I don't really get what they're, they're into, but if you start asking that question, could there be something more? Stand by because you have given permission to discover more of what there is. And when you start a spiritual quest, spirit takes your hand and knows you, knows you better than you know yourself and will bring to you exactly what you need. And when you cognize that we are just here for such a temporary moment and that you cannot die. Your soul simply goes away and then you renew yourself and you come back onto the planet. When you understand that, you have so much help, so much. You don't need to know the answers to anything because it will be delivered in the moment that you need to have it given to you. If you can surrender and trust that you are loved beyond measure, you have guides that are knocking on the door, wanting to get your attention, you have to open the door and invite them in because that is the choice of free will. We do not have spirit coming in and railroading our free will. We have to give permission. We have to invite it. We have to allow it. And so rather than cry on giving me individual messages, it's like a blanket of love that you wear wrapped around you. No matter where you go, you have this blanket. And it's, it's warm. Yeah, it's warm and gooey and fuzzy. And it's there 100% of the time. But Lee, you are the channel. For cry on, and, well, and, and, and you, have anything, a, you have a more intimate sure. relationship. Uh, and I'm I'm not going to discuss that kind of a thing that you did as much as just a a phrase that Cryon keeps giving me, and one that is um, I think more germane to today than any other time because we are so polarized as uh, as individuals. We're polarized in religion and in politics and in countries and, and all that. And Cryon said the best thing any of you can do. If if you watch this program or even a part of it, or you're sitting there being forced to watch it with with a partner, <laughs> I know. Look at I can look at you. I know that's you. <laughs> I see you sitting there, and you can say, uh, you know, they're all nuts. Would you try something for me? Do you believe in God? Most do. This is um, the fact at some some level, some way. Say yes, but not the way you do. So I'm not going to do all your crazy stuff. So, okay, if you do, do a favor for me, meaning it with with pure intent. Pray and say these words to spirit. I give permission to know more than I was told. Dear spirit, give me that. Is there more than I was told? When you do that, you're opening a door for yourself, not for metaphysical stuff to come pouring in, not for crazy stuff, not for channeling, for truth, for you. And you will be delivered what me is what is meaningful to you and what makes sense to you, because we're all so different. All it takes is what Monica said, is us giving permission and asking, is there more than I was told? And what comes in is beautiful. Oh, nobody told me that. Oh, I can do that? Wow. And so that's that's what I could say. Woohoo! <laughs> Any last words either of you want to share before we wrap up something that has gone whew, from the dark today to the light? I'll tell you, I've, it's what I always say. I've said it on every program. I say it on my programs. I say it on your programs. Everybody listen. Don't watch the news. Just don't. 
Just get it written, get it on the net, find a place where you can read it instead of it having been scored like a movie for you. So that's what I say. I want to end with a reminder about joy. Yep. So important. Laughter. So important. The Baby. inner child. So important. Laughter. It comes straight through from the other side of the veil. It is the most sacred emotion you can have. And when you laugh, the chemistry in your body changes. When you laugh, it is an infectious energy. And recently, Lee and I have been teaching an online course, and one of the instructions about laughter and laughter exercises is just how important it is, and this is hard, but when you least feel like laughing is when you need to practice laughing. I, I mean, that sounds super simple and kind of crazy, but when you are least feeling like laughing, yeah. practice, even do a fake laugh, find something that is, Lee and I have kind of different senses of humor. A lot of times we align with our humor, but find something that makes you laugh. I mean, laugh where you just lose your stuff. <laughs> What kind of stuff? I'm not going there. But laugh <laughs> to the point where you have belly aching, hurting muscles. And then go back to focusing on why it was that you didn't feel like laughing. I guarantee that you'll have moved past that point. So, yes, inner child, joy and laughter. Please put that into practice. I have a dear friend who used to travel around the world, particularly Scandinavian nation, nations, doing like one hour laughter practices with people. And by the 10 minute mark, they would start crying. They would start bawling. They would start falling apart of forced laughter that wasn't just a made up laughter. They would, like you're saying, they, they weren't actually laughing because they were happy. And then they would break through to the other side. We have done that in our conferences as well. And uh, there's even laughter yoga. So this is, she, Monica's right. It, it really works. <laughs> All right. Last, 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 last question then. Would you be bullish about bringing more kids into the world at this time? Well, it has, it, it, there's two phases that are because you're afraid the world is going to hell. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't, <laughs> didn't mean to use the word world. And, <laughs> or, <laughs> or are you thinking about uh, overpopulation or what? I would not be fearful to bring children into the world at all at the moment. I would watch how many I brought in. And my yeah. answer would be that you can only answer that question for yourself. You have such intuitive guidance inside of you. And if you are so excited about the opportunity to have a beautiful being come into this planet, rest assured that they are coming in to a planet where we have collectively decided we're having more light than ever before. And we are laying the foundation for an even more beautiful way that we are going to create so much. So much is coming right now. In fact, you know, this is what every soul on the other side, they're already tapping you on the shoulder. Can I come in? Can I come in? Can I come in? So is it, if you wanted to know the question to that answer is, I think we have more souls wanting to come in than people who are deciding to have babies. So let's look at it from that perspective. I like it. So we'll wrap it up on that beautiful note. I want to thank both of you. Thank you, Monica. Thank you, Lee. Thank you, Cryon. So for everyone out there, this is Michael Sandler saying, be well, have fun, have hope, have love, send light, be the light warrior that you were always meant to be. And above and beyond all else, shine bright. Woohoo! I feel good. I feel great. I feel lighter. Do you feel lighter? I think this was the show that we all needed to help us kind of alchemize or make that energetic shift from that darkness into the light with everything going on in the world today. And on that note, if you want to play at that highest level, what I call the level of the mystic, 
the level where you are continuously alchemizing the dark into the light without efforting anything, but playing at that higher level and that higher vibration. Click the link below, become a member of the School of Mystics. Become the mystic you were always meant to be Four Wednesdays each month. You can also join Automatic Writing. Go to automaticwriting.com so you can hear from the other side. And last, simplest but not least, if you want a daily attunement, a vibrational alignment at the highest level each and every day, simply click below or go to Daily Woohoo. That's W O O H O O, dailywoohoo.com. And how does it get any better than this? Here's a link to the next amazing video. Love you guys so, so much. Keep on shining bright. Woohoo! Love you.